trapezium rule is usually thought of as one of the easiest topics in A-level maths. And it is. However, a student on Instagram sent me this question and it's looking very interesting. So let's tackle it. It says the trapezium rule with n equally spaced intervals was used to estimate this, um, this integral. <laughs> Show the value of this estimate is this. Obviously it's dependent on n because we're doing n equally spaced intervals. So obviously, let's just go about the same process, right? So we usually do a table. So x and y. We're going from zero to one. But it's all about finding a pattern here. Yeah, which usually, that's all maths is, is pattern recognition. Now how do we find the width of the trapeziums? Well, all you do is you do the top limit minus the bottom limit, and you divide by how many strips you're making. Yeah, so you're doing one minus zero is one, then you're dividing by n, one over n. So we're gonna have one over n, then you add one over n is two over n, three over n, all the way up to, it'll become this, which is n over n, okay? So we then find the y values, right? We're gonna take uh, zero, substitute into our function to find the height of the trapezium. So we have 2 to the power of 0, which is 1. Then we're going to sum in 1 over n, 2 to the power of 1 over n. 2 to the power of 2 over n. 2 to the power of 3 over n. Dot, 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 dot. And then we're just going to get 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. Then we're going to apply the trapezium rule. So the trapezium rule is saying that the area under this curve is approximately a half h. Now h, remember, is always the width of the strips. So that'll be a half of 1 over n. Then you do the first term plus two lots of all of these plus the last. Now these obviously have the same form and the one and the two have the same form as well. So I'm going to write first plus last plus two lots of all of those middle terms which is 2 to the power of 1 over n, 2 to the power of 2 over n, plus dot 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 dot. What would the, t the, the term before the one be? Well, the one is n over n. So the term before that will be n minus one over n, right? So two to the power of n minus one over n. Okay, interesting. I mean, I, I've got the one over two n. And then we have, uh, we have three plus two lots of. Now, what is that? What type of sequence is that? I mean, we're adding, it is a sequence, right? It's giving geometric vibes, uh, but how? So that powers one, two, even though it's over n, this is the square of this, right? You can think of it like this, this two, to the power of 2 over n is 2 to the power of 1 over n squared because you're multiplying them, right? And we do that a lot with exponentials. So to go from this term to this term, you're multiplying by itself 2 to the power of 1 over n because you're essentially, you can think of it as, as well, you're adding the powers, right? So 1 over n plus 1 over n is 2 over n. So this is a geometric sequence, okay? But we have to be careful about how many terms there are here, right? So, um, well, we got, we've got a, so we have a, the first term, which is uh, 2 to the power of 1 over n, a, 1 minus r, which is this, to the power of n. So we're going to have to figure out how many terms there is, okay? Let's do that in a second. All over 1 minus r, okay? So a... 1 minus r to the power of n, then I'm going to close that bracket, all over 1 minus r. All right, now how many terms are there? All right, well, we have to be careful here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to <laughs> 3, 4, 5, da, da, da. So n minus 1. So we're going, the way I remember this is if we're doing sums like this, and we're going from r equals 1 to 5. 
you guys would tell me you're adding five terms. You're going from the first term to the fifth term, okay? Now, the way I teach my students, and we did this uh, in a previous video, is you do the top number minus the last number, but then you have to add one so that you include this value, okay? Because then when we do this, r equals 5 and 10, how many times do you think students say uh, we are working, we're summing here? They say, oh, we're summing five terms. It's not true, yeah? Because you're doing 10 minus 5, which is 5, then you're adding 1, yeah? So 10 minus 5 is 5 plus 1, 6. You're actually adding six terms here. Five terms here, six terms here. You have to be very careful. You do this minus this plus 1. So when I look over here, and I'm doing this sum, if I was to write it as a sum, to help you guys see it a bit better, we are summing 2 to the power of, I'm going to say 1 over r, or no, it'll be r over n, starting from r equals 1, because when you sub in 1 here, you're going to get 1 over n, so my first term is 2 to the power 1 over n, which is there, but then you're going up to n minus 1, okay? So, applying the same principle here, you do this minus this plus 1. Yeah, so you're doing n minus 1 minus 1 plus 1, which they cancel. We're summing n minus 1 terms. So this is n minus 1. Okay, because very commonly students would just say n. All right, now we have to figure out how to simplify all this. Okay, uh, good luck. Uh, let's ignore all of this for now. I mean, you could multiply in this too, but I don't think that's going to be helpful. Let's just focus on this for now. So we have 2 to the power of 1 over n, 1 minus, now here you're going to multiply the powers, right? So you're going to get 2 to the power of n minus 1 over n, all over, voice crack, 2 to the power of 1 over n. Now, the next thing I am thinking about doing is splitting this fraction because we have this combined fraction. I would like to see 1 over n because these are all 1 over n, right? So, we have 2 to the power of 1 over n, 1 minus 2 to the power of n over n, which is 1, minus 1 over n, all over 1 minus 2 to the 1 over n. Now I think we multiply in the bracket, right? Multiply that in. What do we have? We would have 2 to the power of 1 over n, 2 to the power of 1 over n minus 2 to the power of what? You would add these powers. 1 over n plus all of this, the 1 over n's would cancel. You just get power 1 all over 1 minus 2 to the power of 1 over n. What's our end goal? Okay, easily the other way around. That's fine. We could just times top and bottom by minus 1. We do have this 2. This 3 is a bit annoying. Uh, somehow this is all just going to simplify to that. I think we're going to have to combine some fractions as well. So times in top and bottom by uh, minus 1. I'm going to get 2 minus... 2 to the 1 over n, all over 1 minus 2 to the 1 over n. Okay, I just times everything by minus 1. All right, so uh, let's keep it moving. Let's keep the question on the board so that we can see what we're working towards. So we're left with 1 over 2n. So should we multiply it by 2 now? Thing is, if we multiply by 2, how helpful is that? And then we have this 3. So forget about the 1 over 2n for a second. We have 3 plus 2 lots of, all of that, 2 minus 2 to the 1 over n, all over 1 minus, wait, I didn't even swap this around, did I? I swapped that, but I didn't swap the bottom one. This guy is bugging. 2 to the power of 1 over n minus 1. So 2 to the power of 1 over n. 
So I think what we're gonna have to do is bring everything into one fraction, right? This is clearly all in one fraction. So let me write this as three over one. And then we're gonna have to cross multiply. Now remember, there's this one over two in there. So we have three lots of two to the power of one over n minus one plus two lots of two minus two to the one over n all over times these together like that. Okay, so just remember this is just what's in here. We're gonna have to remember that the one over two n is on the outside. On the outside. Okay, fingers crossed. I think we're gonna have to expand this. Now when we expand this, I'm gonna say three lots of two to the one over n minus three plus four minus two lots of all over 2 to the power of 1 over n minus 1. And guys, this happens in, in lectures as well. When you get to university, the teacher is going to be doing something, then they're going to rub out the board, and then you're going to end up somewhere. You're going to be like, how the hell did I get over here, man? But anyway, 3 lots of 2 to the power of 1 over n minus 2 lots of 2 to the 1 over n. I have 3 lots. I'm getting rid of 2 of them. I'm left with 1. So we're going to be left with 2 to the power of 1 over n minus three plus four is plus one, over two to the one over n, minus one. Absolutely beautiful. This is what we call satisfactory mathematics. Therefore, my area is approximately, remember we had the one over two n, two to the power of one over n, plus one, all over two to the power of one over n, minus one. And that is proved. So, you know, obviously this question was to do with the trapezium rule, but we've learned many, many vital other skills which we need for a question like this, which would be classified as an extremely difficult question in the exam. So guys, if you learn any new tools to use in your exams, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more maths content. And if you're interested in my A-level maths courses, link is in the description. And feel free to join the Learn Gang community on Reddit if you want to submit your own questions and get feedback. I'll see you in the next video. Nice.